my mother is Jewish, so um, that delineates that I'm Jewish by, by blood. Um, I'm baptized Catholic. I've read uh, Buddhism. Um, but really, uh, for me, um, the cornerstone of my own faith is humanity. In the beginning, God created us in his image. But for 2,000 years, maybe more than 2,000 years, religious leaders, these people that we look up to as our religious leaders, have created God in their image. I challenge any faith leader. His ministry did not say anything about homosexuality or LGBTI. The rich heritage and history of the Abrahamic faiths, um, Christianity, you know, and all the other religions of the world, it, at the core, at the core is about this notion of the divine being, you know. And if we can embrace that, if we can go back to that drawing board and recognize that we are all the same, wow. What an amazing world this will turn out to be. When we started, there was a lot of reporting on LGBTI Africans, mainly by, uh, by the West, by organizations that weren't based here, um, by people that weren't part of the communities. And we wanted to shift that. We wanted to not be subjects um, of someone else's story, but to be authors of our own and to really amplify the voices of the communities that, that, that we're serving, that we're of. A lot of the work that I do is to ensure that no one's left behind. Uh, individuals who are most often left behind because of the criminalization of our community, um, because of the pol over-policing of people of color, of queer people, of trans people, of the abusive conditions that those people come from, from countries and don't have access to economically to legal support and so forth um, that fall through so many of the cracks of this uh, really dysfunctional and broken immigration system that uh, those individuals have an advocate. We named the fund the Contigo Fund because uh, we uh, wanted it to be accessible. We wanted it to be something that the community felt it had ownership of. Contigo meaning with you in Spanish. We do counseling services, um, so you can come and get free counseling. We have a legal services department. Um, we just started an economic empowerment program where we're counseling people around economic issues as well. Um, we run support groups um, for survivors of violence. Um, and then we also have an organizing and advocacy side where we are able to have people have an opportunity to not just deal with their um, issues and their experiences individually, but collectively are able to come together with other survivors and supporters. When I changed my name to Rosaline, I was pretty sure that's what I wanted, to go get a job with who I am, really. I mean, I couldn't get a job with my other name and dress. And then with my ID as a male, it was hard. From the time I've been there, I've seen more trans that come there and, and the problems that they have, like in the working in the fields that just, they've been discriminated or they tell them by their male name instead of saying uh, the last name. Like some of the girls would rather say, just say my last name instead of saying Jose, say Garcia but they don't get that respect and, and something has got to change.